Hey guys and welcome back to Coffee with My Sunshine. Today I am joining in on a really fun challenge where we were all asked to pick up the same seven Dollar Tree items and put our own spin on them. So if you would like to see what I created and all the others in the hop, then please keep watching. I will tell you a little bit more about this hop and the challenge here shortly, but let's get started on our DIYs. For the first one, we were asked to pick up clothespins. I was having a hard time finding them, so the little ones are the first ones I picked up, and then I finally came across the bigger ones. So I'm going to be using the bigger ones today, and I have um, some other ideas in mind for other videos for the smaller ones. So for this project, you're just going to take apart the clothespins, just like this. It's super easy. I made it look more difficult than it was. <laughs> And I think for this project, I ended up using two packs, so just $2. And we were also asked to use a charger plate, and that will come into play in this project as well. So what you want to do is take some super glue or hot glue. I like the super glue because it holds it together without leaving like the gap that super glue or that um, hot glue leaves. And you're just going to glue the clothespins back to back, just like this. And I've used these before to make um, like paintbrush holders and snowflakes and stuff like that. So I can link those if you're interested in seeing those. But you can also use the other cl clothes pins as like little clamps as the glue dries. So here is the charger plate that we were asked to use. And I'm going to combine the two to make one DIY. And I thought I would make kind of like a sunburst mirror look. Even though this isn't a mirror, it still has like... A reflective quality about it so I'm just taking this super glue you could also use hot glue whatever glue you prefer to use in your crafts and I'm just gluing on the clothespins by like alternating um, the direction of the clothespins And this was actually kind of fun. And you want to make sure, which I didn't do it, <laughs> I started slanting the clothespins. You want to make sure they stay lined up um, kind of with that rim on the charger plate because you'll see here, it doesn't look bad, but you can tell it has a slight slant to the clothespins. And I ended up using both the super glue and hot glue because I was kind of in a hurry for this one. So uh, the um, hot glue dries a little bit faster, but I don't think it's as permanent a hold. But here is where you can see the clothespins started slanting. But I wanted to tell you more about the hop. This was created by David from David Owen Creates. And he had asked us, invited us all to join in on this hop. So when you're done with my video, check in my description box and click the link below. And that will take you to the next person that joined in on the hop. And you can see what they made with the same seven items. And you're going to really love this group. I think they're a really fun and creative uh, group. And also make sure that you subscribe to them if you aren't already. Give them a thumbs up, show them some love, and don't forget to tell them I sent you. For this next one, we were asked to use a placemat or um, a rug from the dollar store. And I really liked this placemat. It was the Moroccan tile um, placemat. And I picked up these little decorative knobs. They were in by the um, frames and mirrors and stuff. They were just kind of on a ledge. And I'm going to use a scrap piece of wood. You could use any of the little um, wooden signs at the dollar store but I had the scrap wood sitting in my craft room and I thought it was the perfect size. So here I just lined it up to um, where I wanted the patterns to be on the wood because I'm going to make like this cute little um, like decorative holder for like hats, jewelry, scarves, you know, whatever. So I just lined it up and cut it out. This probably would be easier with an X-Acto, but this is what I had right next to me, so I thought it would work. 
I could have just traced it and cut it with scissors too, but you know, I like to be difficult sometimes. <laughs> And then I'm just going to take the little piece of placemat that I cut out and use this glue stick or you could use hot glue, whatever you want. Um, I think this stuff works really well for most things. I did use it on one of my next projects and it didn't work as well as I wanted it to, but it's the Scotch Create Permanent Glue Stick. I can link it in my description box if you want to order some. It's pretty good. So you just want to place it on your piece of wood, push it down nice and tight, and then clean up any of the edges. I just um, trimmed off some of the um, little pieces that were sticking out. And then I'm going to take these knobs. They have the screw, you know, already on them. If you have a really good glue, you could probably like super glue them on and they would hold, but I really wanted them to be sturdy. So I'm just going to use the screws that came with them and um, you just want to drill a hole. Oh, hold on, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. <laughs> so with the scrap wood I used, it was um, not the best wood. So I'm just going to paint the edges and I am using this green because it kind of matches the green in the pattern. The dark blue would look really nice too, but here is where I was showing you where I drew, drilled the holes. Actually, my husband did it for me because I was working on another project. <laughs> and here it is all finished. Like I said, you can hang hats, jewelry, scarves, uh, leashes, whatever you have. <laughs> and I think it turned out really cute. For this next one, we were asked to use... Um, to pick up a book from the dollar store and also a piece of fabric. We didn't have to use them together, but I ended up using them together in this project. And all you want to do is remove the um, inside of the book, the pages. And I got this idea from, um, from Pinterest, but I will link the website in my description box. It, you know, if you want better instruction, she did a really awesome job. I just thought it was really cool. She turned this book into a purse so that's what i'm doing <laughs> so you just want to pop the pages out and the cool thing about this is the book was only a dollar so don't feel bad about tearing it apart and you can still read it because you're not hurting the pages <laughs> you're just taking them off from the cover and here's the cover and here is the fabric that i picked up from the dollar store it's like um, one of those infinity scarves and i really like the pattern i just thought it was super happy and pretty and so what you want to do is measure your book from the length and the width and add one inch to each side or one inch to each measurement. Sorry about that. <laughs> and then you want to cut your fabric to uh, that measurement. Mine worked out perfect because one of the lengths was actually the size of the fabric. So. <laughs> So here you just want to fold up the fabric on all sides about a half an inch. I didn't have um, my iron because it was actually not working last time I went to use it. It just kept spraying the water <laughs> from the mister and it wasn't getting really hot. So I'm just using my hot glue gun. I don't really recommend it because it kind of leaves like, um, you know, the hard like bubbles on the inside because this is a really lightweight fabric. But but like I said, just fold it and um, iron it if you can. I shouldn't have actually glued mine down because you want that flap so that you can um, secure it onto the book later. Um, so the next step, you wanna take your book, open it to like 45 degree angle, trace it about, um, I think she said an inch larger, I think because you're going to do the same where you create um, the half inch fold. So just trace your book and then cut it out. I believe it's an inch larger. I will have to check that and I'll try and put it up on the screen. So 
so here's the little template I'm just going to cut it out and this is going to be for our sides of our purse so you want to double up your fabric and use your template I would pin it I didn't have my pins with me so um, definitely pin it because it's easier to cut if you have it secured to the fabric and then you want to um, glue the two pieces together And here's the second one. I did the same thing. The fabric was just folded. So you're going to have um, two layers and then just glue them together. Then take some ribbon and you're going to want to cut eight pieces of ribbon at four inches in length. And these are going to be the pieces that hold the handle onto the book. Then you just measure where you want your handles to be and then secure the ribbon on. I did two layers of the ribbon for each handle just because I wanted it, you know, to be really secure. And I just hot glued them down and then take your handle, which I ended up doing mine backwards at first because <laughs> I was going to make the handle go across the book, but then I decided that's probably not a good idea. So I ended up fixing this here shortly. And then you want to measure and put in your ribbon on all sides. And then go ahead and secure your handles. And I just took handles off of a purse that I got from Goodwill. I think in her website, she said you can get um, like the handle kits from like Joy and Fabrics. Like I said, I just got mine real cheap for from a purse that I got from Goodwill. So then the next step, you want to take those triangles that you made and attach them to the inside um, piece of the book, like where the binder would be. And just glue about an inch of the tip of the triangle onto the inside of the binder. Make sure that dries up nicely. And then you're going to take a piece of cardboard that you cut to match the same width and length of the inside of the book. And this is going to be um, just to hold it, um, just to give it a little bit more, um, just to make it a little bit more secure glue that in nice and tight and then you're going to attach the other sides of the triangles this is going to be where your purse kind of opens up and see this is where I shouldn't have glued those edges down on the triangles remember I said to just um, fold them and iron them because you want those flaps to attach to the inside of the book if you did that yours will probably go a lot smoother than mine did because I ended up gluing mine down for some reason <laughs> when I was um, working on the triangle pieces. Sorry if it's a little hard to see, it was getting dark, so. <laughs> and you wanna do that on both sides.
Then you want to take your liner piece, it was the first piece that we made, and put it on the inside. Use some hot glue to secure it to the top and the sides. And it's a little bit hard to get the glue gun in there, but um, you know, you could also use another kind of glue that you think would work well, like super glue maybe. But the hot glue gun worked worked great, and I think it turned out super cute, and I love it. You can also um, put a button closure on the top. She shows you how to do that in the website, but I didn't do that. <laughs> Then you're going to take a second piece of cardboard to put down at the bottom where we put uh, the last piece of cardboard and it just holds it into place and gives it a little bit more security. For this next one, we were asked to use a wreath form of some kind from the Dollar Tree. So this is the one I picked. And then I'm using this raffia. I've used it on um, one other DIY. I can link that above if you're interested. I got this from Michael's and it you get so much. Like I said, I've already used it on one project and I use it on this one and I still have what almost looks like a full bag. So <laughs> you want to take um, some raffia strips and cut it. I cut mine to about seven inches. We're going to be making a wreath. Looks like a straw wreath almost. <laughs> so you just cut a whole bunch of those. And this is a very easy project. It's just time consuming. So here I used about three strips of the raffia and you want to make this super easy knot. You just loop it and then pull the ends through and then pull it tight. I started on the third rung of the wreath. You could do every single one, which I might end up doing um, after this video because I just, I wanted to kind of just show you the idea of the wreath. I thought it was super pretty, but I think I want mine a little bit fuller. So I might go ahead and fill in the other rungs with the raffia. And you just, this is basically all you do. You just keep going, keep making these knots. You can use, um, like anywhere between two to maybe six pieces. You don't want it to get too bulky in the knots because, you know, then they really stand out. And they're a little bit harder to pull tight when there's more strands of the raffia. So I just went all the way around and then I did the first rung on the inside the same way. And I just took this actually downstairs and watched um, a couple shows with my family while I was doing this. And my husband was super sweet and cut the pieces for me as I was knotting them. Like I said, it's super easy but very time consuming. But I think it looks really cool in the end. And here, I, I didn't like being able to see the black. Um, the black part of the wreath, which I should have spray painted at first. I didn't think about it, but I'm just going to push back the knots and then just paint the um, wreath form to kind of blend in with the raffia. Like I said, I'll probably go back in and um, fill it in with the raffia pieces just to make it a little bit more bulkier. And then I did the same thing on the outside. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. Let me know what you guys think. I just hung it on my front door. So for the next one, we were asked to find tumbling blocks, but none of the dollar stores that I went to had them. So I kind of had to go a different route. So originally when I was um, looking for those tumbling tower blocks, I wanted to make a phone holder, like so that I could watch videos while I'm like cooking dinner or whatever. But since I couldn't find them, I went to five different Dollar Trees. I grabbed what I could that was similar. So I grabbed this, which is cute on its own, and then those brain teaser games. 
And I'm going to try and make a phone case out of this stuff. Or not a phone case, a phone stand. So I think what I want to do is use these slats for like um, putting where you would have the charger cord come through. And I'll probably just have this near the wall so my phone could lean up against it. But you could put anything like a piece of wood and glue it on the back so that it has something to lean on if you're not going to have it against the um, the wall. But I, th I was thinking of... Okay, sorry about that. My battery died. So <laughs> I thought um, if I put these together, I would raise it up just a little bit. So the, um, you know, where the cord is kind of like stiff, it can fit in there and then go down through the crate. And I'm going to remove, if they come off, the back one. That way the cord can come through the back and up there. We'll see if it actually works, but I want to um, glue this on, let it dry, and then paint it. And you can use any glue that you want here, but this is a little bit more permanent than hot glue. I'm just scraping off the excess. And then you'll probably want to try it out with your cord before you glue it onto the crate to make sure it fits. Okay, so I grabbed my cord. I'm going to feed it through that back piece that we just popped off. then, like I said, mine would be leaning against the wall, but you could always make a back for yours. So I'm going to glue that down right about there, let it dry, and paint it up. I ended up using this brown paint. I should have stained it, but because um, some of those brain teaser wood pieces were orange, I knew it wouldn't look right, so I just went with this brown color. And then I'm going to add a little bit of greenery just to, I don't know, give it a little bit of color because I thought it would look really pretty um, against my backsplash in the kitchen. And you can glue these in so, you know, obviously they stay, but I was just kind of placing them just to get an idea of where I wanted them. Or you could just leave greenery off or add like lavender or anything that would go with your style. And then I just took my cord and looped it through, fed it through the back where we popped off that piece, and then plugged in my phone. All right, guys, let me know what you think of all these Dollar Tree DIYs and this challenge. Don't forget to hop on over to the next video. And don't forget to check out David's channel. I love the idea he came up with. I thought it was brilliant. And don't forget to check everybody else out. Watch the whole hop and you will end up back at my video when you're done. Thanks so much for all your love and support, guys. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe and join my YouTube family. Don't forget to pop into the comments and say hi. I hope you're having a great day so far and I'll see you next time. Bye!